What is up guys, it's Mason once again and today we continue our coverage of the Ghana National Chess Championships Phase 1 qualifiers and this is day 2 round 4 and I play against Vitaly Koman. Now I have seen his name in multiple tournaments but I haven't ever played him before so this is going to be my first experience uh, playing against him. So before we get into the game remember to like, comment and subscribe and if you want to join me live so we can have a a more free-flowing conversation um you can join my streams twitch.tv forward slash pen underscore mason and i would love to see you there i stream mondays tuesdays and fridays without much ado let's get on with uh this analysis so i'm playing as black and vitaly is playing as white and immediately he starts with knight to f3 and already i'm angry right because <laughs> i like my opponents to be very clear with what they are doing i like definitive moves right D4, yeah, sharp, solid, E4, tactical, that kind of thing. Like, give me an idea of who you are. But here he plays a flexible move with 9 to F3. It means the game can go into any different shape or form. So I'm already angry. And I'm like, okay, D5. Let's try and figure out what he's going to do. If he plays D5 here, uh, maybe we can transpose into a... Um, maybe he can play a Jubava London. I don't really know much opening starting with knight to c3 but maybe he can shift into something that i know a queen spawn opening or something then he goes knight to f3 and i'm like what is this guy doing <laughs> like already he has thrown me off and i'm already feeling defeated right because i hate i hate seeing things like this I, I just i just don't enjoy seeing things like this and i'm like okay <laughs> what could he be transposing into i just can't seem to figure it out okay bishop to be f5 playing a landing sort of setup as black and then he goes d3 and this is passive and i'm and i'm wondering is he that kind of player like you know there are, there are players who prefer to wait until their opponents make a very clear uh, a very clear indication of their plan or they wait for their opponents to overextend and then make a quick kind of counter is he that kind of player I wasn't so sure again like i said this is my first time seeing him play or playing against him sorry so i go knight to f6 again standard landing setup and then he goes bishop to f4 i see bishop to f4 and i think okay it's possible he's going to play d4 here uh play e e3 and then get the jubava landing setup that's the first thing i'm thinking about I'm also thinking that maybe he could do a strange g3 bishop here or he could simply also just play e three and put his bishop here i can't seem to put a name to the opening um but by that i mean i can't identify what he's playing i hear the I, i'm getting chess.com tells me the ready which i should have predicted but I, I i don't really know what he's doing and i don't really know what he's aiming for so when you get into these scenarios where your opponent is playing weird moves and you don't know what to do don't try to overextend don't try to feel like oh he's playing overly passive i'm going to play overly aggressive you might burn yourself what i'll recommend is playing simple natural moves and not overextending until like the game begins to take a shape or a form that you can understand so you play to the position rather than playing to your opponent he's playing passive so if i play aggressive he won't know what to do and that's what i do i play e6 simple developing move following again my landing structure and then he goes e3 so still passive but um at least this was within the realms of my um uh, my thinking bishop to d6 and i've mentioned many times before i do like it if my opponent takes this because i get a very strong center right double pawns are bad except in these kind of scenarios where they really help you hold squares right so i'm feeling okay here if he takes i'm fine but then he plays bishop to g5 okay now if he played here i was going to be confident that he might play d4 right now if he plays e4 or d4 it gives me a clear like indication of what he wants to do so him holding back on the pawns is more of like a hedgehog not really playing a decisive pawn break in the center but just holding on to your opponent loses control of the position and then finally striking so i'm getting that kind of vibe from him so i was expecting bishop to g5 g3 but then he plays bishop sorry to g5 and i don't know I, I i feel confident in this position i feel okay with this position so i continue developing as normal this pin is not really going to stress me out uh and again d4 i'm completely fine with d4 
e4 I've, I've got e4 covered so i'm i'm okay here i don't need to stress myself with the bishop move <clears throat> i play c6 again this is a standard landing setup my opponent is not being very forward with his moves i keep saying this but he's not being very forward with his move so i'm, I'm i have the time to play in this kind of slow pace he plays bishop to e2 and then i just play h6 just to see where my opponent wants to go will he decide to go this way or will he decide to keep the pin uh he decides to keep the pin <clears throat> i go knight b to d7 he plays queen to d2 and as a chess player i should get this kind of indication right this is a very clear indication now my opponent could have castled kingside all this while but he never did so and now we're playing a move like queen to d2 uh, the clearest indication I can get from this move is that my opponent wants to castle queenside. Now, if I play a move like b5 here, it's, it's possible my opponent is just going to castle kingside. Right? Because I'm telling him that if you castle queenside, I'm ready to attack you. So I see this indication that my opponent wants to castle queenside. And I'm like, okay, I want to start pushing towards his kingside, queenside, but I don't want him to have an idea. That that's what i'm doing i want him to feel like i want to go for his king side so i thought a little bit i didn't want to make a pawn move because pawn moves seem to be so like they, they seem to be very clear what i'm trying to do so i i was really looking I, I really wasn't looking at pawn moves and i decided that the best move i thought would make him think i'm going for his king side would be queen to c7 but you take a notice i'm also doing a similar thing as him i'm also not being clear where i want to castle if he castles kingside i have a very quick way of launching an attack against him with g5 so i feel like even though we are both waiting for who to castle first i feel like in all situations i hold all the cards right that's basically how i feel in this position and being lucky i guess with my with my calculation my opponent does castle queenside and already i'm feeling a little bit better right <clears throat> I, the opening was a little bit shaky because i didn't really i couldn't really tell what my opponent was going for so now that things seem to make sense to me i'm feeling very happy now because my attack flows much quicker than anything my opponent is going to do so what do i do b5 now we can push towards the king side and attack my opponent plays rook h to e1 now this is a very like strange thing now in okay i haven't castled yet so this move makes sense but obviously after seeing rook here i castle and i want to drive at a point here you will notice something very strange here when pieces castle on opposite sides normally what happens is that uh, games take this pawn storm kind of form where whoever can get his pawn storm first wins so it begins like a, it begins like a rush of pawns. so i expect my opponent to attack me on the king side and he should expect me to attack him on his king side. But the move rook h to e1 indicates that he wants to attack in the center. Now that is not wrong. I don't think that's a wrong plan because he seems to have a very like <clears throat> a lot of forces focused in the center. Right. So I, I, I see that, but I feel like he, it would have been much better for him to try and attack me on the king side because I feel like even he even I don't think this is a good move, but even if he were to sacrifice this pawn. It, it could, in a sense, help him open things up, right? I don't think this is good, but you can imagine him trying, like, let's say, h3 moving with g4, something, like, some kind of forward pressing move. I, I felt uh, he might, like, maybe be able to get the edge of, but playing rook h to e1, uh, I, I, I could not agree with that move, but I, I could see where he was coming from. <clears throat> I castle kingside, and then he plays knight to d4, and here I'm like, okay, <clears throat> You are focusing on the king side, right? Your rooks, your queen, everything's on the queen. It's on the king side. I'm focusing on the king side. I would much rather have my pawns defending your most likely strong, like your most likely pawn push, which is the the e4 pawn push, because d4 does nothing to the position. So I would play whatever move I wanted to play, which was the move a5, which is the move I played. And the point is, if you cast capture and I capture, these pawns do a very good job of holding your e5 push. That that is where my calculation is going so if he takes my bishop i have no problem sure you could argue that these pawns could become weak in the future and i could use this bishop to be a very strong attacker of my king side but i don't think it's that worth it at this point in time right 
So I go a5 and he doesn't take, he rather plays bishop to g3. And I just decide to take, uh, to save one of my bishops here. Yeah, because in this position, I looked at it and I'm like, okay, if he plays take, uh, if, um, let's say I play a move, let's, let's say a5. Uh, then he plays bishop takes and I play queen takes and he plays knight takes. Now I realize that, okay, um, lots of pieces have been traded off and I don't think I have so much fire in my position. The, in the engine disagrees with me, but I, I feel like this position, I, I don't have much fire here. And I'm a little bit worried about, let's say, pawn push, if takes, takes, and this kind of thing. Of course, I'm not going to make this mistake, but this is something I'm kind of uh, worried about. <clears throat> so I'm like, okay, save the bishop. It's more likely he wants he's going to trade the bishop regardless i can't save my bishop uh so takes takes and then he finally plays the move f4 so after all these moves he finally uh decides to attack my uh king side oh okay don't worry i i forgot to mention something that after he played this um move and then i played this he actually had a very interesting idea of knight takes pawn takes knight takes it was a very interesting idea i realized later on uh but anyways let's continue with the normal game takes takes and then f4 <clears throat> and i'm like okay so now he's starting but i think he's a little bit slow because i have moves with tempo right i can threaten my opponent with tempo and what do i mean by that i play a b4 which is actually not what you want to do you want to play a5 first because you don't want to allow your opponent to have access to this square the a5 square but by playing this move i give my opponent access to this square but i'm willing to take that risk <clears throat> right it helps my opponent get sort of like a saving grace but i'm willing to take that risk because i want to put my opponent on pressure under pressure and i want to like get my attack rolling so i play b4 he plays knight back i play c5 he plays knight back and at this point i i, I i'm trying to figure out how to continue the attack i know i'm better but i still don't know how to conclude the attack because you see in as much as the king is smothered it's very difficult for me to break through Right, I need him to create weaknesses, and so far he hasn't done that. So I, I don't really know. Like, it might seem simple to some people, but to me, I was really like kind of struggling to figure out the way forward here. So I looked at the board and I concluded on queen to c4, with the idea of coming in here, bringing my rook from f to c1, and then going for pawn pushes. That is basically my idea. He plays bishop to f3. Again, I feel like this is slow. I get his point. He wants to prevent me from pushing my pawn. But he doesn't really stop me right i feel like he should keep his attack going he should try and put me under pressure in some way shape or form but he seems to be playing a more reactionary role as you can see in the opening as white you are expected to push the initiative but my opponent seems to be playing a waiting kind of style and that style is what is continuing here he seems to be reacting more than pushing the envelope and that is very good for me so now i go queen to a4 with the threat of winning this and you can imagine a4 a5 a4 a3 i can create problems for my opponent there so he decides to play a3 himself i did consider taking i don't think taking works i think it's a little bit too slow i play rook a to c one pre preventing any like attacks here but the engine was like it's fine even if i lose my rook i would have a very strong and determining and, and uh, uh, destroying destructive attack so i wouldn't have needed to worry about it so much but i decided to play the safety first move this is more like my style now he finally plays the move e4 when i see e4 i feel like he wants to strengthen his defense either that or he forgot right it could be that he forgets because if i take and he takes it's no longer a very strong pawn chain now your pawn is being held by your pieces which is uh not really what you want to see right it's not that strong if a pawn is being defended by pieces. You can see that in these isolated queen pawn positions, right? So I see this move and I'm like, I'm completely fine. I play c4. Now, I would never have known about this kind of thing if I hadn't watched uh, some of the lines in the Queen's Gambit accepted, accepted many years ago and some lines in the London as well. So I just push with c4. And the point is, if you take, I can take and keep pressuring you or I can decide to take with my rook and um if you take here i can take here and open this up and you see that the bishop has now come alive so regardless of how you take i have a very strong position uh so he decides to play knight to a1 and this knight and this knight became like a thorn at my side because it was one of the things that really annoyed me trying to get to this square but regardless we push on with the idea we play pawn takes he plays queen takes the file is now opened 
and now we want to open the bishop out how do we do it i did it with temple knight here queen comes in and he, and i was a little bit conflicted here because i felt if i played this he could try and remove my attack right i was thinking that he could do this and and i didn't want to give him that opportunity so i wanted to kind of like keep my knight here but i felt that by keeping my knight here i'm really hindering my attack one way or the other so i ended up just taking with that knight regardless and here he took with his bishop i didn't expect him to actually take with his bishop but he took i played bishop takes and now he finally plays b3 i go queen to c6 and still i can't seem to figure out the way forward i i really can't seem to figure out the way forward i'm looking at this position i know it's winning but it's a positional advantage right my opponent's pieces are stuck on the back rank they are not active i'm the one have, having the active pieces i'm the one pushing the envelope but i just can't seem to figure out what is the knockout blow right because everything seems to help him in my mind right if i take here and the knight takes he has an extra defender here like so many things are going I, I know there are many other moves i could play like queen here threatening the knight but i thought he could do so many things I, I was i was really like worried here so i thought for a while of course it's my opponent's move but i'm just letting you go through my my mind and i thought for a while and i said what's the weakest point in my opponent's position it's this but i can't use my bishop to attack it yet i need to have more attackers uh in this attack so what comes to mind here i suddenly realize if i can open this up or i can push my pawn here do something along the side of the board maybe i can get something rolling and my opponent's next move helps me with that he plays this move defending and also showing me that he wants to bring his king this way so now i ask myself okay if the king comes in here and i have an open file this is going to be a very interesting one so engine here recommends that um, um you play this you take here which is the move i was talking about again i wasn't confident about it but the engine recommends you, you pay here and if after knight takes you go um rook to b8 is that what it says here rook to b8 and these kinds of moves are going to cause problems for your opponent but uh, i'm not so sure about that line uh, so i play rook f to d8 uh rook f to d8 and the point is whether or not he decides to move his king my plan is set right my plan here is set if i play pawn push and you take with your queen i win if you take with your rook you've weakened the defense of this position i can play actually play bishop takes and i'm not in as much trouble as the previous position i calculated and then he plays king to d1 which kind of seals the deal uh i go d4 and no matter what you do this is bad but you have to really calculate this position i had to see a whole long winded variation here to calculate this position before i play d4 because here i'm giving him back a pawn right i'm up a pawn i'm giving him back a pawn in order to open up the position that's the point of sacrificing pieces or pawns right is to open up diagonals is to open up files in order to progress an attack so that's basically what i'm doing here so i'm giving back the pawn but i have to be very sure that this pawn i'm giving back rather benefits me than helps my opponent right so it's a positional pawn sacrifice and my opponent takes he plays rook takes and if i were to take immediately it's still fine but it misses the point and the point is to play bishop takes check of course if you play knight takes check this is checkmate so you don't want to allow that uh you have to move your king and here if you weren't calculating from the beginning you would think my opponent is safe now even if my opponent was safe in this position i'm still leading by a large margin but he's not safe because i have a very interesting response here queen takes g2 and after queen blocks queen takes king takes and i take the rook and this is the position i had to see many moves ago rook to c1 right i can't move my bishop away because i lose this and it's going to be very difficult i kind of thought about playing knight here but i i couldn't see the point <laughs> and i just saw this very interesting line of rook to d8 rook to d1 and and the point is no matter which option my opponent picks i'm winning if rook takes i take that i have three pieces versus my opponent two and his two pieces are bad um if he plays um knight takes i take and this one is also falling and finally if he plays rook takes here i take he takes and then i take 
and this is actually the option that he went for and after knight back because he didn't want me to pin and win i play takes and i'm going to promote this pawn get a queen and win the game so a very interesting game and i think this was the so far the only game of the games that we played where everything seemed to go smoothly for me right i i played a very simple opening uh that is to my strength i couldn't really figure out what my opponent was doing but rather than play into my opponent and go uber aggressive i decided to just like tone it down a bit play what i know and jump at the biggest opportunity my opponent gave me which was here i think everything is completely fine until after queen to c7 i think he could have played anything else he could have gone anywhere else but the moment he castles queenside it just gives me the chance to um push a very strong attack and the second thing was he played a more reactionary role than a more aggressive role because if if he went for me this game wouldn't have been as simple as as it went right it would have been a, a really strong battle where i would have to watch out for his attacks save myself first before i can keep pushing my idea but you can see throughout the game i'm the one asking the questions right throughout the game i'm the one asking the questions and that's a very key thing here so i said the bishop takes takes here like i said i ask him where do you want your knight to go it goes back where do you want your knight to go it goes back bring the queen here telling him that i'm about to open up the file he says okay i'm going to stop that i bring my queen here asking him another question do you want to lose the pawn he says no i bring my rook here i'm about to push the pawn again what do you say he pushes e4 I say nope answer this question do you want to lose your knight or do you want to open the file he says i'm going to open the file right every time he makes a move i'm asking him a question where's your queen going to go what are you going to do now i'm about to open the, the the diagonal see every single move of mine posed my opponent a question so i really did enjoy this game i was a little bit worried because i i, I was thinking i was going to flop such a very like strong attacking position because i did I, at some point in time i was very i was really struggling to find out what would be the best idea to play in the set position but all in all uh it went on well and i managed to win the game so guys if you did enjoy this video remember to like comment and subscribe as always you can join my stream switch.tv forward slash pen underscore mason i stream mondays tuesdays and fridays and i would love to see you live thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next video which is round five peace